Hello guys, how are you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel, and yes, we're finally getting ready to talk about Skyward Sword, possibly making it to HD. So the idea of Zelda Skyward Sword getting ported to HD, or brought over to the Switch, or getting some sort of remaster or remake, has been a conversation for a very long time. The game is seven years old now. It came out November 19th or November 20th something, 2011. That's a long, long time ago. It almost doesn't seem like it's that long ago, but it's truly been a while. And uh, it was a very polarizing game, released obviously on the Wii, right at the end of the Wii's life. I actually have a great memory of that, because what I remember was uh, the week before was when Skyrim came out. So it was this incredible like one-two punch of like awesome kind of fantasy, medieval, sword-swinging kind of, you know, games, very well-known games. Skyrim was obviously 11-11-11, uh, November 11th, 2011, and that's why I think it would have been about the 18th or 19th, around a week later, that I remember Skyward Sword was coming out. And it was just such an exciting time, man. Um, and so, yeah, the idea of Skyward Sword finally getting a remaster has been a conversation pretty much ever since Nintendo moved on from the Wii, and moved over to the Wii U. And of course, it's even more relevant because the Wii U did get two pretty fantastic Zelda remakes and remasters themselves. Uh, the Wind Waker, my all-time favorite Zelda game, and Twilight Princess, a pretty underrated gem. Of course, what's happened here is the discussions about Skyward Sword getting ported to another console, getting an HD remaster treatment, has also included the idea of the controls and the motion controls. This has been a huge barrier that a lot of people have seen when looking at bringing the, the game over to a new platform. And it's a justifiable thing to be concerned about. It definitely makes a lot of sense to bring that up and to worry about whether or not that could make it possible. But at the end of the day, there's been a little bit of traction, you could say, the last couple of days about the idea of the game actually finally getting its proper HD treatment. So essentially what seemed to have happened was in the last day, Nintendo had a Zelda concert, a symphonic concert in Osaka, Japan, and apparently uh, IG Anuma, who we all know is the director and producer for a lot of these Zelda games over the last decades or so, he's essentially like the, the Zelda godfather at this point. Beyond Miyamoto being the creator of the series, Anuma has really been spearheading the franchise for a long time, at least the main console entries for the most part. And uh, apparently he was there at this concert, and he seems to have teased the idea of Skyward Sword making it over to the Switch. Now, nothing has been 100% confirmed. Uh, this tweet actually went up, which seems to have started the conversation as far as I can tell. You can see it here. Uh, this fellow is saying, It seems Anuma teased Skyward Sword for Switch at the Zelda concert in Osaka today. Multiple attendees are tweeting about it. And that, of course, made a lot of people realize that, hey, apparently Anuma's talking about the idea of Skyward Sword coming over to the Switch. And again, nothing is confirmed, and there's a lot of details about the idea that we don't even know, but it sure as heck is exciting. So to me, the idea of Anuma saying Skyward Sword might be coming to the Switch means a couple of things. It means we might be getting just a straight port of the game, maybe it's a downloadable only title, kind of treated like, the, you know, a Wii Virtual Console-esque sort of thing, where you just download the standard definition version for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks, whatever, and it's playable on the Switch. It could also mean a complete remaster. It could mean getting the HD treatment turned into something, you know, similar to what they did with Twilight Princess or The Wind Waker. That could absolutely be the case. Maybe they wanted to go all out and do a crazy ground up remake, redo all the textures and models and the lighting and the effects, almost making it a new engine, so to speak, visually, and releasing that in some awesome physical release package for 60 bucks. I mean, any one of those is possible, just like similar conversations I've had about the Metroid Prime trilogy coming to the Switch over the past year. They could be looking at the same concept when it comes to Skyward Sword. For me, you guys know what I would like. I want a physical copy of Zelda Skyward Sword coming to the Switch if this is a reality. And I mean, I guess I I would like the full remake thing, you know, do uh, to Twilight, uh, to, sorry, due to Skyward Sword, what Sony did with Shadow of the Colossus. Yes, I would absolutely love that, but I don't know that I would expect it. If the game got just an HD treatment and an HD polish similar to Twilight Princess, I think that would be fantastic. I would happily pay even full price for that uh, because I think that the game is seriously underrated, man. I, here's what we have to talk about when we talk about Skyward Sword. The fact that 
I think overall, most people, most fans and people who played the game did like the game. I think it overall has a, has a sort of positive history and most gamers reflect on it as a good Zelda game for sure. But not everyone does. I think there is also a pretty vocal contingent of people out there that really didn't like the game or found it to be painfully mediocre and hindered by those motion controls. I know that there is a sizable audience out there who feels that way. And so it's kind of, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, it is a polarizing Zelda title. I think that that's a fair thing to say. For me, I think it is absolutely fantastic. It is a borderline masterpiece game. I know that a lot of people might think that's crazy, but I don't really care. I think that the game is that good. I mean, the story is probably the best story, the best character of Link, and definitely the best character of Zelda we've ever had in a game without question. And it did do a fantastic sort of time travel story as well, you know, doing kind of the next step of what Ocarina, put, Ocarina of Time put in place 20 years ago now. And I just love what they did, and I liked the cinematic approach. I don't think that it was too heavy-handed. I don't think that it bogged down the gameplay or the amount of control the player had of the game. It, it wasn't like a... It didn't do like what a um, like a Quantic Dream kind of thing did. It's not like it was like the Heavy Rain version of Zelda. Yes, it had a lot of cinematics and movies, but they were so spaced out and they felt so organically connected to the story of the game that to me, it felt like the perfect Zelda balance of a lot of very deep story and character development and a lot of gameplay and exploration and typical Zelda awesomeness. And I know I'm also gonna catch a lot of crap for this, but I truly enjoyed the controls. They were not perfect, obviously, but I think that they they were more than serviceable. They more than made the game work, and it didn't hinder my enjoyment at all. In fact, it made a lot of the things that I did more fun. Stupid things like shooting the little scarab and grabbing bombs and making it aim by turning the Wii remote with your hand and stuff. I don't know. I guess I know a lot of people hate that stuff and they found it gimmicky. And yeah, you know what? It was gimmicky, but I don't think that that makes it bad. I actually really liked a lot of that stuff. And the swordplay stuff was cool. It made some enemy interactions and some puzzles kind of cumbersome here and there. Yes, I completely admit that. But the thing is, it did so much more right than it did wrong or cumbersome that I thought it was overall a great experience. It made it a lot more immersive. The swimming was a little bit weird and difficult, and when you get later in the game, I can't remember what happens, but I think you, the, the forest area, I think it fills up with water and suddenly you have to swim through like the forest filled with water. There was so much swimming in that section that it felt, that, that part was a little annoying for sure. I liked the idea of filling up a previous map with so much water that suddenly it becomes a big water town and you gotta swim through it to do stuff. I loved the idea, but th that was the one section where the motion control aspect of swimming really didn't work and was super frustrating just to me. But again, the idea I'm trying to get across is I still loved the motion control. So that's part of why I think the game is great. So we then start to think about making the game work on a console that isn't the Wii and doesn't have a Wii remote and nunchuck. And of course, we know that the Switch is the current console and that's what Enuma is teasing. So could they make this game work on the Switch? And the answer is yes, obviously, duh. <laughs> that's what the Joy-Cons do. Just like the Metroid Prime Trilogy. Could you make the Prime Trilogy work on the Switch? Yes, you can, because your Joy-Cons allow for motion control pointer aiming and it's all gonna work out just fine. I don't care what anyone says, the Joy-Cons can replicate Wii Motion Plus without question. I know the technology is there in those things. Wii Motion Plus is almost 10 year old technology. Of course, the brand new, not even two year old Joy-Con technology can replicate that, which is also why I think it could absolutely replicate Skyward Sword gameplay and allow the sword swinging and the puzzle solving and the pointing and the swimming and all of that stuff. The Joy-Cons could totally do it. Now, obviously there is still a pretty sizable roadblock when we look at this idea. Yes, the Joy-Cons could emulate the Wii Remote Nunchuck, and I know that you could make Skyward Sword work with one Joy-Con in each hand without question on the Switch, and it would be fantastic. But obviously the question then becomes the portable nature. The Switch is a unique beast in this respect. It's not just about making the game work when you're playing on your TV with two Joy-Cons in your hand. What if you want to play Skyward Sword on the go or on the Switch Portable when you're at work or school or traveling? For myself, I play in bed quite often, like before I fall asleep. Could they make it work that way? And it's tricky. I don't think that it would be as smooth of a jump to Portable 
that like the Metroid Prime Trilogy would, for example. Again, I discussed that on that last Metroid video. The fact that I think Metroid Prime could work both with motion controls and with dual analog. I think they could make all those game work games work portable very, very simply, and it would work just fine. Skyward Sword, I admit, it would be trickier. It would definitely be harder. I think of, um, there's a puzzle late in the game that I always think of as, like, one of the big roadblocks to playing Skyward Sword without motion, and it's where you have to, like, take your sword and point it, and I can't remember the context, so forgive me. It's also in the forest, and you have to, like, draw symbols on a door. You maybe have to do that a few times in the game. It's been a while. But there are parts where you have to, like, draw symbols on a door. And that would be really, really difficult without proper motion control. I guess for myself, at the end of the day, I think that Nintendo would be willing to make the concession to say, hey, this is a this is a puzzle in the game where you're just going to have to use your analog stick to make your little cursor draw the shape that it has to be drawing. And, you know, it's going to be weird and maybe not feel the best. And maybe it would be a lot easier if you could do it with motion. But I think it would ultimately still work, and there's there's enough, th there's really not that many puzzles, I should say, that really require that. Um, I think that they could make it work. The combat with some of the enemies where you gotta slice left, and you gotta slice up, and you gotta slice diagonal. I don't know. I, I don't know, man. Maybe there's a way to hold down, like, you know, the L button, and it brings up, like, a... A wheel of angles and you have to like rotate the wheel and select the angle you want and make him slice at that angle and th I mean we might be getting too complex and to be fair that truly might be the barrier that might prevent this again this is not confirmed this is just Anuma said something apparently no one's said exactly what he said Nintendo and Anuma have not confirmed a damn thing about this it just is a very heavily rumored thing that apparently happened and, and, and that's where we start to talk about how it could or couldn't work. And I have to admit that those are the things. Certain enemy encounters and certain drawing puzzles do make me wonder if you could make Skyward Sword work without motion controls. I, I truly believe that if Nintendo wanted to make this happen, they could find a way. And so that's why I'm very open to the idea and I think that it could happen. I also think Skyward Sword just deserves it, you know? I mean, the fact that Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, these games have all had remakes with updated graphics and controls on various platforms in the past. And Skyward Sword absolutely deserves that chance. And I just really hope that Nintendo's choice to make it so motion control based didn't truly smother the game's ability to grow and to have a life beyond the Wii and to not be able to be ported to a new successful console like the Switch. I mean, the game deserves that second chance, just like all these other Zelda games had. And so I truly just want to believe that it's possible. So that's it. Those are my thoughts on this crazy rumor. Again, just a rumor. This may never, ever happen. Um, but I tend to believe that it's going to happen. At some point, this game will get a re-release. Hopefully, it's on the Switch in the next year or so. Um, but those are my thoughts. You know, to me, it makes sense. It would be hard, but I think it's possible. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Do you believe this rumor? Do you think that whatever Inuma was talking about on stage really means that the game might be coming to the Switch? Do you think that there is a way to make Skyward Sword work on the Switch on a non-Wii platform? Do you think that it's impossible? Do you love the game? Do you hate the game? Have you played it? Have you never played it? I mean, there's a lot to talk about with this, you know? And so I guess I want to hear your guys' opinion on the idea of a Skyward Sword HD remake on the Switch with motion controls and without motion controls. What do you guys think? Please talk about it below. And that is going to be it for me today. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.